So I got this Citizen Watch, an old one from Fleabay. Seems to be working fine, so hopefully all I have to do is just give it a clean and oil. So let's go and do this. Okie dokie. Um, I'll do a time grapher test first, so at least that way I'll know how it's performing before the cleaning. Um, we'll go ahead and remove the straps. And it's one. And the other one as well. The one with the buckle is always the 12 o'clock end, just in case. So I'll just give the watch a few wines. Actually, I gave it about 50 wines, um, but with the magic of editing, I've kind of sped up the film. Okay, I'll do a dial down uh, performance test first. Testing is at a 49 degree lift angle. And also I've sped up the time in this one. That's looking good, 249 uh, amplitude. I'd say it's pretty healthy. And now we'll do a dial down test. Two fifty seven amplitude, that's looking healthy as well. So roughly what? Two forty nine maybe? Two forty seven, two fifty seven, so maybe it's about two fifty thereabouts. But it looks healthy. Next test I'd like to do is the midnight date change. I'd like to check if and when the date changes. Is it on midnight, exactly midnight? or five minutes before, or maybe five minutes after midnight. So we'll find that out. Okay, just keep an eye. And... Boom. About 30, 13 minutes early. That's way too early. That's not even midnight. So I'll check the day and date quick change and see how it performs. I find it to be a bit sticky, a bit clunky. So might just need a bit, a bit of lubrication. Okay, yeah, I'll just remove the case back. Pro tip, try to align the hands if you can, to align the, align the hands now, prior to opening the case back. It just makes it easier. And if you can't do it, that's fine. Remove the oscillating weight first. Next is the winding stem. So this way we can remove the uh, movement out of the case. And now 
we flip the watch over in the cushion. Good. And the hands are already aligned. With a plastic cover, a piece of plastic for protection, um, I'll get the hands out with the hands uh, remover. And put the hands away somewhere safe. Next is the dial. We need to loosen the dial screw so we can remove the dial. And the other one as well. So set the dial somewhere safe again. And looking at the plastic spacer, you can see it's got cracks. Um, I guess it comes with age. So we'll have to be very careful when removing that spacer out. Before we proceed, let's try to, uh, I'll try to push the movement from the dial side. There you go. Now let's just go ahead and um, tighten the uh, dial screws. Pro tip, do that, tighten it, because otherwise you'll lose it uh, during the cleaning process. So it's better to uh, screw it back in. And we'll just put back the winding stem. So that's clearly engaged with the quick date set. Okay, now I can proceed to remove the balance complete this way we'll protect it from harm should we have any uh, accidents and just gently Price off the balance and carefully lift it out. Again, try to put it somewhere where it's out of harm's way. Okay, let down the power of the mainspring, just gently um, moving the uh, click spring. Flipping over to the dial side, we can proceed to remove the day dial jib. That's the C clamp. Try to price it off from the back of the C clamp rather than trying to push it from, from its end. It's easy to crack. When you're about to Take it out, you can put a piece of Rodico so that way it won't, won't ping away from you. Oops, I'll put it on pause. In case you didn't see that, it actually flew. Here you go. We'll watch it on the second screen, another camera, sorry. And you can see that C brass there. So like I said, it does fly, 
Um, so you got to be careful. A piece of erotica would be helpful. And on a good day, sometimes it doesn't. So it's up to you. Remove the day dial or the day wheel. And the date plate has four screws, so we'll remove that. The citizen parts list call the date plate um, uh, the hour wheel guard. I don't know why. It's more like a date plate. Gently remove the date plate because it does bend easy. Okay, we got the screws removed, so just gently lift the date plate. Don't force it because it's a very thin piece of uh, metal. Next, we can remove the date dial driving wheel. He's the one in charge of um, changing the day. Now, this wheel is made of plastic, and give it its age, I'd be very, very careful. It is fragile, I would assume. And I've been touching it very lightly, hence it keeps falling out of my tweezers. Next, R remove the date dial. Remove the hour wheel and the date corrector along with the date corrector spring. It is, it is a bit tight with this movement, so care has to be observed in this one. Okay, that was intermediate date wheel. And now we'll remove the date dial driving wheel. Again, this is made of plastic, so please be careful when you remove it. I've got no spare parts for this one, so you have to be really careful. I don't want to break anything. Now let's remove the minute wheel guard. This is the second screw. Okay, put the minute wheel guard away, put away. We can now work on the minute wheel. And the setting wheel. Just check if it's chamfered. That's like beveled at the bottom. On this one, it's not. Um, some setting wheels are chamfered at the bottom. It's just good to know. It'll come in handy uh, when you put it back up again. Cannon pinion and the date jumper, which I've almost forgotten to remove. Let's 
try to remove the setting lever spring. putting my finger so it won't jump. Okay, let's put away the setting lever spring. Next is the oak. With this yoke, it's got that crooked arm on the clutch wheel, so just be careful. The setting lever is riveted, so it can't be removed unless you force it. However, I've seen others, they've um, got loose ones, they can take, they can pull it out. But in this movement here, I don't want to risk it. I don't want to force it at all. Gently lift it and we can pull the winding stem out. And now I can grab the clutch wheel. That's it on the dial side. Next will be the movement side. Now we need to remove the barrel and train bridge, which is being held by three screws. So this is going to be a challenge putting it back together as other movements would have the train bridge separate from the barrel bridge. Gently lift it up. And remove the bridge, the train and barrel bridge. Remove the crown wheel, along with the intermediate washer wheel. Oops. Try to work in the middle of your workbench so that way when things fly, hopefully it'll land close to the edge, if not in the middle of the table. And this is the reduction wheel, wheel and pinion and the pole winding wheel. Remove the fourth wheel. And the third wheel. Remove the ratchet wheel. And now we can remove the barrel wheel. Or barrel complete, I should say, sorry. Now let's remove the pallet bridge. Gently lift it with the pallet fork stuck in it and escape wheel. Remove the sweep second pinion. Just be gentle, it's a bit fragile. And now we need to remove the center wheel bridge by loosening the screws.
the center wheel bridge. And remove the center wheel. Next will be the click spring. And now the click. I'm just checking the movement, that's all. I'll just pick up this errant screw. I think that came from the train bridge. Okay, I'll just quickly show you how to disassemble the mainspring barrel. There's really nothing much to it. Um, it's a straightforward process. So I'd like to check um, where the gear is located at uh, before I start doing stuff. So some of them would have the gear teeth at the bottom, um, some would have it on the middle, and some would even have it on top of the barrel. In our example here, um, it's at the bottom. Okay, so what I'll do now is I'll be grabbing um, two tweezers. Um, my, my plan is to push the barrel down um, from the teeth and what's going to happen is the arbor is going to push the lid up thereby opening the barrel like so. And next what we want to do is pin down the mainspring um, that way we can get the lid out without having the spring uncoil on you. And I'll just put that out of the way and we'll concentrate on pinning the spring down and also trying to find a good angle on getting the arbor out. Okay, I'll just try to find them. Um, turn it around a bit. It is a good angle. So just gently press it off. That was easy. And there you go. Now it's at this point, I'd like to mention that keep an eye on the way um, the spring is wound. Um, if it's clockwise or anti-clockwise or counterclockwise. Um, in this case, it's clockwise. It'll come in handy come the time when you try to assemble the bridge, or sorry, the main spring. Um, knowing in which direction to wind it will be very, very helpful. If you do it the other way around in the wrong direction, you're, you'll just stuff up your mainspring. So my plan is to have my thumbs um, price it off um, by gently pushing it up. Um, but obviously it's not working. On a good mainspring it does, <laughs> so. So, 
the idea is one thumb holds it down while the other one pushes it up and they alternate um, in doing so. Okay, here we go. It's happening now. Really gentle coaxing from the other finger. Just be patient, I suppose. Um, but just try to guide it out of the uh, barrel. Here we go. Also, keep an eye on which um, short end of the bridle um, uh, the mainspring is facing. If it's facing against the wall or um, um, from the wall, um, just know which side it is. Again, it'll come in handy when you try to put the spring back. like it's facing away from the wall towards the arbor. Oops. That's pretty much it. That's all there is to it. So next stage is cleaning. Um, let me just get the uh, spring. Here we go. And voila. Taking it out is easy, putting it back in is the more challenging bit. But thank you for watching everyone. Uh, this is the bit where I leave you with pictures of what we just did and bid you farewell. Do take care when you're out and about. Remember, if it's not absolutely essential, please just stay home and stay safe. Better yet, get an old watch to play with and take up the hobby. See you next time. Peace.